In truth, it is odd that this book should not have been written by an American. Its thesis is the hopelessness of our attempts to build up a stable civilization with units of unequal income. And it was in America that this inequality first became monstrous, not only in money, but in its complete and avowed dissociation from character, rank, and the public responsibility traditionally attached to rank. On the eastern shores of the Atlantic, the money-makers formed a middle class between the proletariat, or manual working class, and the aristocracy, or governing class. Thus, labor was provided for, business was provided for, and government was provided for, and it was possible to allow and even encourage the middle class to make money without regard to public interests, as these were the business of the aristocracy. In America, however, the aristocracy was abolished, and the only controlling and directing force left was business, with nothing to restrain it in its pursuit of money, except the business necessity for maintaining property in land and capital and enforcing contracts. The business prudence, which perceives that it would be ruinous to kill outright the proletarian goose that lays the golden eggs, and the fear of insurrection. There was no longer a king and an aristocratic governing class to say to the tradesman, never mind the public interest, that is our business. Yours is to get as rich as you can, incidentally giving employment to the proletariat and increasing our rent rolls. All that remained was the tradition of unscrupulous irresponsibility in business. And when the American millionaires first began to astonish Europe with their wealth, It was possible for the most notorious of them, in the course of an inquiry into the proceedings of a trust with which he was connected, to reply to a criticism as to the effect of his business policy on the public with a simple, damn the public. 